Hello everyone, I am Filomena Trindade and welcome to my video blog. We're continuing on with things we can do to support and maintain a healthy immune system, especially in these days of a COVID-19 disease. And today we're going to be talking about staying hydrated or hydration and sleep. So let's start with hydration. Exactly how much water should we be drinking? And what is hydration? How does the water then get inside our cells? So before I get too far ahead, let's just start with what are we talking about when we say we need to stay hydrated? Well, if you read on the internet or even look at some scientific journals, it's a little bit of controversial in terms of how much should we be drinking. So some people say you should be drinking a half an ounce to one ounce per each pound of body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be weigh drinking between 50 to 100 ounces of water per day. I particularly like one other school of thought, which is the rule of eights. I tend to like rules, rules of threes, rules of four, because those are things that I pretty much can remember. So the rule of eight is you drink eight glasses, eight ounces each of the cleanest water you can find per day. And so what I usually say, and try sort of to try and even, even it out, I will say drink anywhere between four and eight ounces, or eight glasses, eight ounce each of water per day. But you wanna try and get close to the eight glasses, eight ounce each. Unless, of course, you have some kind of a disease or you're suffering from some process in which you are fluid restricted. And we have patients, especially cardiac patients, that are fluid restricted. So this doesn't apply to them. They need to follow uh, what their doctor has recommended. But in general, for good hydration, eight glasses, eight ounce each, the cleanest water you can find per day. Now, there's some of us, when we drink water, we immediately have to go to the bathroom and pee. Right, we have to urinate right away. And that usually means that you're not really hydrating your cells. There's something going on in which the water is just constantly flowing through you. So here are a few tricks that you can do to help stay hydrated. Number one is you can add some trace minerals to your water, which will help, it, depending on where you live and what kind of water you have, some of it already may have a good amount of trace minerals. However, if you are filtering it, whether you're using a carbon filter or, or a reverse osmosis filter, those would be removed. So you can put them back, so you can add some trace minerals into your water. And in addition, I like adding at least once per day a tablespoon of collagen or just good all gelatin because some people may need a little bit of protein or an amino acid to something to try and get the water inside the cell. And that helps and most of us are a little bit deficient anyway in terms of gelatin or collagen and that helps with our bone health, for example. Now if you, most, let me back up, most gelatins are animal based and so if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you may want to get a protein that is non-animal. And you can find some vegetarian ones out there. So how much do you add exactly? Well, I usually say one tablespoon, as most of it's powdered, of powdered gelatin in one of your glasses of water. And I like doing that first thing in the morning because I feel like that helps me stay hydrated and not accumulate so much fluid, like in my feet and in my legs, for example, throughout the day. One other thing that um, I'm often asked is, how do you get that much water per day? Because I'm talking about eight glasses, eight ounce each. Well, I have, a again, another little rule that helps me. And it's number one, one glass as soon as I wake up in the morning. So I usually wake up, brush my teeth, drink one glass, eight ounces. And I'll do the same thing when I, before I go to bed. So as I'm after I brush my teeth at night, I'll drink another glass, so that's already two. And then I try to get another two to three in between meals during the day. And then I don't like drinking a lot of water with each meal because it can dilute your digestive juices and your digestive enzymes, as well as the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which we desperately need to break down our food and our nutrients. So what I prefer to do is drink uh, half a cup 
to a cup right before I eat, maybe 10, 15 minutes before. And I also include what I am ingesting in my meal. So for example, I eat soup twice a day and I include that liquid. And so that's usually about a cup. So you're getting another cup pretty much with, or I should say another eight ounces with each meal. To recap, one eight ounce glass, first thing you get up, one before you go to bed, one in between meals, you're up to four, half between or half before each meal, half to one, depending, so there's another three, and then don't forget about what you're getting with your soup. So you're eating at least two a day, and you're eating at least a cup, maybe two cups, and one cup is eight ounces. Now, let's move on to sleep. Major, 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 major importance. Sleep is so important to help us restore and for our immune system to have a chance to build up all the defenses possible. How much do you need? You need eight to nine hours of sleep per night, preferably uninterrupted if at all possible. Why eight? Because that's how long it takes in terms of our body readjusting our circadian rhythm. But it's also what we need to get into the deep sleep and that deep restful sleep. But even in addition, it's also extremely important for us to make melatonin. And in the news now has been quite a bit of information about melatonin and the importance of it in terms of fighting the coronavirus. And in order to make melatonin, we need to be in bed at least <clears throat> one and a half to two hours before midnight. So you want to be in bed around 10 to 10.30 p.m. Why is that so important? Because it is that deep sleep before midnight where we're able to make the most melatonin. And you want to make sure that your room is completely dark. There, is, there are no electronics in the room and there is no light. And when you get up in the morning, you want to make sure that you expose your eyes to light so that we can then maintain that circadian rhythm and make sufficient melatonin. Now you can also supplement and there'll be some links that you can follow in terms of looking at what supplements you want to include or add, but it starts with our habits. I just like to stay hydrated, we need to drink. In order for our immune system to stay healthy and for our bodies to be able to make melatonin, we need to get at least eight hours of sleep per night and preferably an hour and a half to two hours. The best would be two hours before midnight. So be in bed by 10, 10.30 p.m. at the latest. I wish you the best. And just remember, there's a lot that we can do. We can totally empower ourselves to help our immune system not fight this coronavirus and so that we don't develop the COVID-19 disease. My best to you and many blessings.